Okay, now let's move on and talk about the ESC side. The ESC receives a, a throttle value from the flight controller. And we often think of that throttle value as being a PPM signal from 1000 to 2000, which in fact, if you go back a ways, that is what it was. And if you go to fixed wings, it still is. But of course, we have one shot nowadays in the multi-rotor world, and one shot isn't actually a PPM value. So we still think of the throttle output as being a PPM value from 1000 to 2000 because it's convenient. But in fact, it, it isn't. We may as well just think of it as a, a value from 0 to 100 or or whatever. But internally, at least with BL Heli, and I think Simon K also, internally the ESC presents the minimum and maximum values that it expects to see as uh, PPM microseconds timing. And that helps with coordination between the ESC and the flight controller because it's, it's fascinating because the flight controller is outputting one shot, which is not PPM, and the ESC internally is using some internal scale of 0 to 100 percent which is not ppm but we're all sort of keeping up this polite fiction that it's ppm when it really isn't well we'll talk about it as if it's ppm the esc has a range of uh, power values that it can output to the motors and we'll just call that from 0 to 100 percent in reality maybe it has something to do with the voltage it puts out to the motors i don't know more volts less volts but we'll just call it 0 to 100%, where 0% is the ESC is not putting any power out to the motors, and 100% is the ESC is putting 100% all the power. It's fully, you know, just shoving the current across the motors as hard as it can, okay? And it is going to need to know what PPM values it is going to, it should expect to see from the flight controller. So one of the reasons for this is that back in the day when we when we would fly fixed wings, haha, no, who does that anymore? Ha ha ha, that's a joke. Back in the day when we flew fixed wings, uh, we would the ESC would get the PPM value directly from the transmitter, and as we've discussed, transmitters may not have consistent endpoints for their channels, so you would use calibration, and the calibration would tell the ESC the lowest value I'm ever going to send you is. 1050 and the highest value I'm ever going to send you is 1950 and then the ESC would internally map its 0 to 100 percent output scale scaling to those values if the ESC sees a value below the minimum or above the maximum that just goes off the top of the chart and we get the min or the max this still is relevant in the days of flight controllers which as we've said you know with a flight controller and a modern transmitter, we can output whatever PPM values we want, really, within reason. So today, we still have situations where the timing between the ESC and the flight controller may not be perfectly in sync. They have a, they have a crystal oscillator or some other method of keeping time so that they know how long a microsecond is. And uh, they, 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 they may not agree completely. That's just you know normal manufacturing tolerances. Uh, so the calibration is still useful because when the flight controller says to the ESC 1500 microseconds, the ESC may read it as you know 1480 or 1490 or 1510. And without calibration, we wouldn't have a way to compensate for that difference. So the ESC has a minimum and a maximum value that it expects to see, and it maps its 0 to 100 percent output range to those values. How does that correspond to with the, with the configuration of the flight controller? The flight controller, the ESC should be calibrated so that it's, it sees min command from the flight controller as its own internal minimum. We said that min command should be the point when the motors stop. They're not moving, okay? That, well, that's the same as 0% output. So we want min command to correspond to the PPM minimum. And we want max throttle to correspond to the PPM maximum so that when the flight controller sends out whatever max throttle is, when the flight controller sends max throttle, it's indicating I want full power. We want that to correspond to the ESC's PPM max, which also means I'm, I'm sending full power to the motors. So they're all sort of talking the same language. If we had a shared clock between these devices and they all agreed on exactly how long a microsecond was, we wouldn't necessarily need this step right here 
Um, and also, if we had something like a serial link, like a CAN bus serial link, then we wouldn't we wouldn't need this as well. The the, the uh, flight controller would just say, "Give me fifty percent," and boom, that's it. But since we're working with these PPM pulses, or at least nominally we are, we need some way to calibrate these things. We're still working in the domain of analog signals, so we need a way to calibrate for for differences in the way that these devices measure the different uh, lengths of the pulses. At the end of the last video, I threw out the example of what if you had a transmitter that couldn't get the throttle channel all the way up to 2000 and suggested that maybe you'd need a lower max throttle. And now we can think that example through and see how that plays forward. As the stick is low, below or at or below min check, the throttle value that's being output while the copter is armed is min throttle. And that is scaled to wherever min check is. As the stick is raised, the, the throttle curve and the input curve, the stick curve, come together, right? Because they, they, it's a linear scaling, so at the top they, they match up, and then the lower you go, the further apart they are. So as you get towards the top, they're closer and closer together. And let's just assume that as you get to the top, whatever the throttle, whatever stick position you're at is approximately what throttle value is being output. So let's say you get to the top and you're at, say, 1950 or 1975, the flight controller doesn't perceive that you are outputting max throttle or commanding max throttle. When the ESC was calibrated, it was calibrated to the flight controller, not the transmitter. The, the ESC perceives the max value it can output as this max throttle value. And since the transmitter isn't getting to max throttle, the flight controller isn't outputting max throttle, the ESC is not outputting all of its power. So what's the way, what's the right way to work around this? Well, first of all, if you have a transmitter that can reach 1,000, 2,000 endpoints, then it's very simple because that's what clean flight expects. And your ESC, you can just calibrate your ESC to clean flight and, uh, and you're good to go, right? If you're in a situation where you can't get to those endpoints, you're gonna need to raise min check to a value you can hit. So let's say your, your throttle only goes down to uh, 1075. You're going to want to set min check to something like 1100 or 1125, and that'll be where your throttle will start, that stick position. But bear in mind that you, the, the setting of min command and min throttle doesn't change. We'll get to that. And then let's say on the top end, you only get up to 1950, okay, and max check well, I think max check defaults to 1900, so you'd be fine. Uh, and by the way, min check also defaults to 1100, so as long as you can go below 1100 or above 1900, you're, you're fine. And most transmitters can do that, but some of them can't. So let's say on the top end, you can only go up to 1850. Well, then you're going to need to lower max check to something like 1800, and you're going to want to set max throttle to 1850. So uh, based on my understanding of how this all works, I believe the right approach is to set max throttle to the maximum throttle value your, your transmitter can actually achieve, or 2,000, whichever is less, okay? If you can get to 2,000, just use that and, and be done. If you can't get to 2,000, I think you're going to need a lower max throttle and max check. Otherwise, the, tr the flight controller will never output enough, uh, a high enough pulse to get the, flight, the ESC to output maximum power. As far as min command and min throttle go, you're going to want to set min command to, uh, well, nominally 1,000. But it turns out it doesn't matter so much what min command is. Min command just needs to be, you know, stop, right? So as, as long as min command and the PPM minimum in the ESC agree with each other, as long as they're set to the same value, again, taking into account the, the variances in the measurements, so just because you got min command set to 1,000 and your PPM minimum set to 1.000 mic uh, milliseconds, that doesn't mean that the ESC actually is going to perceive the same uh, timing as the flight controller is putting out. You may want to do a stick calibration to make sure that they're actually seeing the same thing. But as long as these two agree with each other, then the motors will stop when the flight controller tells the ESC to stop the motors. And then you, you need to raise min throttle to the point where the ESC makes the motor spin and just barely that. Okay, so, so go to the motors tab in Clean Flight Configurator 
and raise the slider until the motor just barely starts spinning. But do that after you have calibrated the ESC because the value at which the ESC will start spinning the motor will depend on where the PPM minimum has been calibrated to. Alrighty, I believe that's all correct and I believe I haven't made any mistakes. I'm going to sum up real quick here and then I'm going to sign off and I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> In your transmitter, set your endpoints to 1000, 2000 if you possibly can and with 1500 as the midpoint. Set your min check and your max check depending on how much dead band you feel like you want at the top and bottom of the stick to input stick commands. The default is 100 microseconds. I find that that's probably a little more than I care for. I think I have mine set to 50 microseconds, so 1050 and 1950. Set your min command and your max throttle to 1000 and 2000 if you, if you are able to achieve those endpoints in your transmitter. Do a stick calibration on your ESC so that your ESC or ESCs know where your endpoints are. I don't believe it's sufficient to just enter 1000 and 2000 or whatever it is. I don't believe that that's sufficient because I don't, I don't find that ESCs uh, consistently measure timing with the, with the, even even between three or four ESCs from the same batch. I'll do a calibration and they'll give me slightly different values. And sometimes I'll get one that's really out. Like I have one one of my ESCs reads like 30 microseconds off from the others. The others are all within about five or 10 microseconds of each other. And this other one is like 30 or 40 off. So I always want to do a stick calibration to, to make sure that the ESCs know from their own internal frame of reference what min command and max throttle are and that they've set their PPM min and max correctly. Then use the motors tab and raise the slider until you find the, the value, the lowest value where the motors start to spin reliably and set that to min throttle. And finally, do not worry about where min throttle is relative to min check because it doesn't matter because min throttle is scaled to wherever min check is. So whenever your stick gets to min check, that's where min throttle will be output to the ESCs and your whole throttle range will then be, be sent at, uh, with however much stick travel you have left. I hope that was helpful and happy flying.